Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and for today's video, we are going to discuss another DOH program which is your essential intrapartal newborn care. So your intrapartal newborn care or your EINC, also known as your Unang Yakap, is a program that aims to reduce neonatal mortality rate occurring in the first 2-3 to three days of life. When I talk about neonatal, this is the first 28 days of life. And when we talk about deaths, it commonly occurs within the first 3 days of life. But any deaths that happens within the first 28 days is considered as neonatal mortality. And that is what this essential interpartal newborn care program aims to reduce or at least uh, reduce or eliminate. Okay, for that matter. Now, we'll talk about your essential intrapartal newborn care. This is an immediate care at the time of birth and essential care during the entire period or the newborn period. It is to promote evidence-based care and carrying out step-by-step time-bound interventions that aims to address Millennium Developmental Goal number 4 and also one of the indicators under your Sustainable Developmental Goal number 3, which is specific for health. Essential interpartal newborn care is also known as the first embrace or your unang yaka. So this is a program that is designed to eliminate stereotype newborn care practices such as unnecessary suctioning to be eliminated. So basically, these are the um, the aim. One of the aim of this program is to eliminate the unnecessary activities and unnecessary actions that uh, during the old days. Okay. The, the healthcare practitioners are doing in terms of caring for the newborn. So EINC is created by the Department of Health and the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society with the technical support of the World Health Organization and the Australian Agency for International Development or also known as your OSAID under the joint program of the Maternal and Neonatal Health in the Philippines. So ENC being transformed to essential intrapartum in newborn care, okay, so or from the essential newborn care, it is now termed as your EINC because it is commonly done during the intrapartal phase of the delivery, okay, and this is the care given to newborn during that stage. Now, what is the legal basis of this program? The legal basis is Administrative Order 2009-0025 which is adopting the policies and guidelines of essential newborn care that is issued on December 1, 2009. So it provides now the four time-bound evidence-based interventions that all facilities in the Philippines mandated by the Department of Health should follow okay, regardless kung saan man or wherever that facility is and whatever it is, whether it's public or private, or institutions that is catering and providing essential newborn care should make use of this four time-bound evidence-based intervention or this EINC protocol. So before we go to that, the EINC protocol was made to address the most common cause of neonatal mortality or death in the Philippines. This includes number one, the prematurity or the born preterm children or child, asphyxia, infection or sepsis and uh, congenital anomalies neonatal tetanus diarrhea and take note that majority of this newborn die due to stressful events during labor delivery and immediate postpartum period that is why this program was actually created together with your antenatal care in order to address these concerns now preventive measures Okay, the most common and the most effective way to prevent any form of anomalies, okay, after delivery is the initiation of breastfeeding, which is the most effective preventive actions to provide uh, the most cause of death among units. And breastfeeding should be exclusive for the next six months. And we can start uh, complementary feeding on six months and one day or after six months. Take note that breastfeeding alone can sustain the nutrition of the six months old infant or below six months old infant. You do not need, uh, you do not need to give any um, vitamins and or any uh, additional supplementations to eat for breastfeeding because the breast milk alone is already enough. And 
Uh, according to studies, delaying the initiation of breastfeeding would increase the risk of infection-related death among infants. That is why one of the uh, protocol or the um, uh, guidelines under your EINC is the early initiation of breastfeeding. Okay. Now, every newborn has the need to the following. Number one, to breathe normally and to be warm and to be protected and to be fed. All of these things has to be met and this could be met with the use of your EINC or Essential Intrapartal Newborn Care. So what are the four core steps in your EINC? These are the four core steps of EINC. We have number one, immediate and thorough drying of the newborn, followed by the early skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother, properly time cord clumping, and the non-separation of the baby from the mother promoting exclusive breastfeeding. So what are the specifics in each of these core steps? Let's start first with number one, immediate and thorough drying of the newborn. This is done to stimulate the child or the infant to breathe and also to prevent hypothermia, which is a common complication to infant before. That is why bathing is no longer recommended to children at least for the first six hours of life. Okay? And we have to dry the child for at least 30 seconds while checking the breathing simultaneously. So this is basically um, to check if the child has any abnormalities in terms of breathing or perhaps the presence of any blockage in the respiratory tract uh, in both the mouth and in your uh, in the in the infant's um, nose. Okay. So you do not wipe the vernix caseosa unlike the old practice wherein we actually wiping this and we are actually beating the child for this protocol. Why, uh, wiping the vernix caseosa is no longer allowed and uh, baiting the child is no longer allowed for at least six hours. So after uh, wiping the child thoroughly, we have to change the cloth or the wet cloth into a dry one to prevent hypothermia. So other concepts includes you, do not, you will no longer slap shake or rub the baby uh, we do not ventilate unless the child is flappy lymph and not breathing that's the time we're going to do our um, respiratory ventilation or resuscitation to infant for as long as you are a trained healthcare professional and of course do not suction the child suction the child unless the mouth and the nose is blocked by a secretions but if the child is already loudly crying there is no need for you to suction the mouth uh, compared to the practice before we're in automatically we need to suction the mouth and the nose but for this new program or protocol there is no need to suction the mouth if there is no blockage to the mouth and nose and this can be confirmed if the child is loudly crying so for the second core step, early to early skin to skin contact with the mother, the general goal of this step is to promote the mother and baby bonding. On top of this, we also have the other benefits, which includes your blessed B for the breastfeeding success. So for the initiation of the breastfeeding, the lymphoid tissue stimulation, okay, lymphoid tissue stimulation, because the baby will suck the first breast milk, which is the colostrum, that contains now immunoglobulins or antibodies that would help now activate the immune system of the child, specifically your immunoglobulin A. And of course, exposure to maternal skin flora because our skin has a normal skin flora, flora which is your Staphylococcus aureus, and this would also help the baby to stimulate its own flora. Sugar. Okay, in terms of the ash, sugar, this is protection of the child from hypoglycemia because take note, from a source, a placental source, they will now need to feed uh, themselves using now their, uh, their mouth, the, their mouth of, through sucking with the mother's breast. So possibility of hypoglycemia is high. That's why you need to monitor that. Okay. And the last one is thermoregulation because the temperature is going to change and the baby is prone to develop hypo uh, thermia if they were not properly dry. That is why on the first step, you have to dry them thoroughly. That is for the early skin-to-skin -skin contact. Other concepts include if the child is breathing or crying, position the child prone on the mother's abdomen or chest in between the mother's breast, and cover the newborn and with dry linen, and of course, of course put bonnet. Okay, Do not put the clothes first because you need to promote early skin-to-skin. 
For the temperature check, you have to make sure that the room is at 25 to 28 degrees Celsius and the body's temperature of the child or infant or the baby should be within 36.5 to 37.5 as the normal body temperature of a child. For the third step, primarily time cord clump compared before that we need to milk the cord. For this one, okay, we do the properly time cord clumping for the reason that it prevents anemia in both the term and preterm babies and plus it prevents bleeding in the brain for premature babies so properly time cord clamping okay is done when the cord stops pulsating or between one to three minutes or not less than one minute in terms of the preterm not needing to ppd so those are the moments when you can actually perform your clamp unlike before that you need to milk before you clamped but now we don't need to clamp or we don't not need to milk the cord. All we need to do is to check for these moments, the, pulse, the stopping of the pulsation, one to three minutes or not less than three minutes in terms in preterm with not needing PPV. Okay, and these are the moments when you can actually clamp the uh, cord of the child or the infant. Now for another concept is that don't uh, you have to don a pair of gloves, two pairs uh, to be exact, after hand washing because one pair needs to be removed after removing the child from the mother's vagina okay so before cutting the the umbilical cord remove the first set of gloves and palpate the umbilical cord and wait one to three minutes or until the cold pulsation stops and clap cord using sterile plastic clamp or tie at two centimeter from the umbilical cord and clamp again at five centimeter from the base and cut the cord near the plastic clamp. So five centimeter from the base and you have to clamp, cut near the clamp. Then care of the cord, do not milk the cord towards the baby, observe for the oozing blood and you have to place a second tie between the skin and clamp when bleeding observed. Dry cord is, drying the cord is recommended but do not use any substance to do it. And do not use binder or big kiss, which is a common practice here in the Philippines. For the last step is the non-separation of the baby. Never leave the mother and baby unattended. And you have to monitor them every 15 minutes for the first one to two hours by monitoring the breathing and, pre uh, and preventing any hypothermia. Leave the baby in between the mother's breast to promote skin-to-skin -skin contact and the baby will now show readiness of breastfeeding after 20 to 60 minutes and when you under this time you have to discuss the importance of breastfeeding to the mother include the breastfeeding position and cues or when to breastfeed the child and of course the importance of breastfeeding to the baby also import, uh, discuss the importance of birthing the child every after feeding so let the baby feed for as long as they want preferably within two hours on both breast and birth after each feeding. Do not do the following things. Do not give sugar water in infant formulas. Breast milk is already enough. Give bottles and pacifiers. Do not give bottles and pacifiers. And do not throw the colostrum because colostrum is the most nutritious milk, which is considered the first breast milk. Okay, that contains now immunoglobulins and high nutritional substances. Other important concepts includes weighing, eye care, injections, and other examinations should be done after the infant had full breastfeeding, which is from uh, first uh, 30 to, six to 90 minutes. Postpone bathing for at least six hours to prevent hypothermia. Early washing may lead to the hinder or may lead to hindering the crawling reflex and can lead to hypothermia, which may lead to secondary uh, uh, con conditions such as infection, coagulation, acidosis, delayed newborn circulatory adjustment, hyaline membrane disease, and brain hemorrhage. Okay, and according to this law, the Executive Order Number 51 and its IAR do not request or accept from milk companies or their representatives any of the following give sample products posters and promotional materials sponsorship sponsorship without permission from fda and endorsement of products covered by milk code doing so it will make 
the professional uh, possible for a possible lawsuit and a possible revocation of their license. So that would be all for the EINC program. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video. Bye for now.